Okay, good morning everyone. Um, hope you've all had a, a lovely Easter break. Um, I'm quite surprised to see quite so many of you here. It's very difficult for me to get in this morning. Um, today we've got a, a guest lecture from Mikael Sørensen, who I think you will remember, or hopefully you'll remember from the first lecture. Um, he'll be presenting to you today and coaching you through how to amend your business pitch so that you can present more effectively during the Venture Cup if you get that far, but if not, uh, in your Viva exam at the end of this course. Um, just getting a little bit of feedback um, from you guys. Uh, you suggested during the week or previous weeks that you weren't quite sure about the deliverables uh, in terms of the appendix that you have to hand in. Um, I sent out an email just to clarify it. Can I just have a hands up if anybody's unclear about what they're handing in as deliverables for this course? Okay, hopefully it's cleared up then this time. Um, I also sent out a, a message uh, suggesting that I was a, a little bit disappointed that not so many people turned up to the, uh, the Venture Cup or the pre-Venture Cup lectures. And I've heard it might have uh, annoyed a few of you. Um, of course, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone in particular. Um, I know lots of you have got courses on at the same time, um, but there was only three people from the course at the lecture. And I expected maybe a few more than that. But of course, I know you've all got other things to do and other responsibilities. Um, anyway, so today we're, we're going to do... I know you've all seen each other's presentations, but hopefully today's going to be... Okay. Uh, regarding, this, uh, regarding the extra venture cup lectures, is it possible to, to see it in either the stream somewhere, or is it possible to see the PowerPoints or anything like that? Because I, I would really like to see what, what's going on in the which place, but I, I'm, I'm having another course, so I can't, I can't go. Great. Uh, okay, well, I can certainly uh, distribute around the slides, and I'll do that straight away. Um, I don't think they're being streamed, at least the last ones haven't been. Michael? No, but I think actually the new ones will be. Okay, great. So, there you go. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'll sort that out. I'll send it around to everybody so you can see it. Um, now, today, you've already done your midterm presentation, so you're slightly familiar with what each other's... Uh, business projects are about. Um, so I'm not expecting you to all sit there and listen through each other's business pitches. I think today is going to be a bit more of a hands-on session where you kind of regroup, go through what your core business idea is and start modifying and updating your business pitches. Um, and Mikhail here from the uh, Venture Cup will be coaching you through how to best modify it. Um, so I think with no further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce Mikhail from the Venture Cup. So, good morning, everybody. Tom said you might remember me. Uh, I'm pretty sure you do because I was the guy who nearly choked the last time I was here in a glass of water. And I saw the video. Someone was so kind sending me the stream of the video afterwards where I was choking for like two minutes up here. So you should remember. Anyway, um, as Tom said, I'm here to give a brief, brief introduction to how to do an investor pitch. Um, and um, then we'll have a practical session afterwards dividing you all um, into groups, uh, just to uh, make sure how many of the groups are present. So if you go from, you're from group 1 to 15, as I understand. So uh, is group 1 here? No? 2? 3? 4? 5? No? 6? 7? 8? Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then Tom told me there's no 15, 13, so 14, and 15. No. Okay, great. So, the, the agenda for today, first I'm going to give you some inputs on how to do the investor pitch. Uh, it's kind of twofold. First about the content of the pitch, what should be in the pitch, and um, then how can you communicate that. After that we're going to divide you into like, like two bigger groups. The first 
well, six teams, I think, then, and the next six afterwards. So, in general, the purpose of the investor pitch, pretending then that I or the jury of the Venture Cup panel uh, is an investor, um, well, they actually are, I'm not, um, but the purpose is not really to get funding, not immediately anyway. Actually, I think the purpose is more creating interest, creating curiosity um, from these persons that you're speaking to. So I think you should have in mind that the purpose is more to uh, establish a relationship, create interesting interest and set up some meetings. So what the, um, what the pitch should do is to give a clear description of your idea, of course. It should tell a bit about um, how are you going to make money, what will be the investor's return on investment. It should tell a bit about where you are right now, what are your current status, your current situation, and uh, what will be your further steps from here, the next milestones. And uh, ideally, uh, you should tell that uh, through a really good story. So the first part about the content, what do you tell them? This might seem kind of obvious to uh, do an opening slide, a logo, whatever. But um, I've seen a lot of people not doing that. And um, as we'll get back to, actually the first 20 seconds is the most crucial part of the presentation because people tend not to be focused very long. So you really need to catch people's attention. Uh, you need to get their interest. And uh, also, you meet, need some, them to uh, understand what this is about so they don't spend the next five minutes sit, sitting wondering what the basic of your ideas, idea is. So, a good way to do this is uh, to do a short, short introduction of yourself and uh, then in one phrase, in one sentence, give a summary what is the core of your business idea. So, it could basically just be me saying, Hi, my name is Mikko Sørensen. I'm the Regional Venture Cup Manager in Copenhagen. Um, I'm here to tell you how Venture Cup can inspire and help young entrepreneurs at the Danish universities through various activities as workshops, advisor programs, and our tour annually competitions where participants can get feedback, funding, and network. That could kind of be it if I did a Venture Cup pitch. So, a brief introduction, taking no more than 15, 20 seconds. Well, this, is, um, this part of the pitch uh, is, of course, the core of the idea. I need to say, you don't, this is not like a template that needs to be followed from point one to point seven, but it's just um, to give an idea of which uh, parts of the business plan, of the content, that, that could be included. Of course, it's, uh, they are not all identically, and it's not necessarily that your pitch should contain the same as your pitch, but this could be some good things to include. Well, the core of the business idea actually arrives from the background, the customer pain and uh, the problem that your customers are facing. So, this is kind of the point of departure for it all. We need to know what is that customer pain? What is that problem that somebody is facing? And your idea is the painkiller to that problem. So I would really like to know how does your idea address this problem? And how is that way of addressing this problem? Because there are probably already something, some invention, some product, some service that addresses this problem. But how does your idea do this in a new way? So that basically leads us to why are your solution better than the competitors? Because there are always competitors and there are a lot of them. So why is your solution better? Um, this has basically also got to do with the value proposition. Um, how does your idea your product, your service, create value for your user. And what are your unique selling points? This part of the uh, product and service description could also include thoughts on uh, idea protection. 
could all, both be trademarking and the team behind, but of course uh, a patent strategy could also be very good to include here. But we need to have in mind, all this takes no more than five minutes in total. So I'm probably 25 minutes, 30 minutes describing all this, so you need to be a lot quicker than I am. The market and the customer, this is also very crucial, very important part of the pitch. Because if there's not a market, if there's no customers, the idea is not very good from uh, an investor point of view. So of course we need a description of the market, um, the size of the market, who is the, uh, what's the potential market, is it global, is it local, um, what are the segments. A bit about the geography and uh, a bit about the development of the market. Is it a market in growth or is it not? Um, a bit about the customer profile. Uh, who is the typical uh, customer? The, um, is the user your buyer? That's quite an important part as well. Uh, who is your user? Is your user the same as the person buying uh, your service, your product? Um, is it uh, mainly female, is it male, middle age, uh, age segmentation, geography segmentation, and uh, perhaps job segmentation? Very important parts as well. And this, this is the kind of, uh, one of the things, when we see the pictures at uh, Venture Cup, this part is something that, um, that the panel often asks into details to actually. Um, because they want to know how you will make money. And there are various ways of doing it. And uh, actually, you can change that over time, but your business model is very important. And there are some common types. Could be a fixed product price, that be you going down by a CD at the store. Um, it could also be a subscription service, that would be Spotify instead of buying a CD. Um, after sales and service, uh, or devices disposables uh, like buying a razor and then need to keep buying razor blades afterwards. So often it would be quite a good idea to consider different business model and see which one would you benefit the most from because there are often many solutions to this. Um, the expected price uh, is obviously quite important because uh, I'm not very likely to buy a $10,000 razor, but uh, we'll probably buy it if I do a $1 blazer, razor. <laughs> um, and uh, a bit about the expected turnover per year. Of course, um, this is also uh, one of the things that the investors often ask into details about uh, the, uh, the implementation and the status. So basically in a timeline, where are you right now in the process of going to the market? Are you early development stage, even earlier idea stage? Are you, uh, have, have, did you have your first proof of concept? Um, so where are you right now and what are your further steps from here? So I think what people need to know is basically, if you got funding, what would you do tomorrow? So that would include um, some milestones, saying, so what are the most, uh, most important milestones from here on in the process? It could uh, both be sh short term on the way to market or long term strategy from saying like five years, because probably uh, from an investor point of view, most investors would like to have an exit opportunity, uh, exit strategy um, within the next, say, five years or so. It depends, of course, on which kind of investors, but they, they want to see a horizon, they want to see a timeline that seems realistic. And they also want to know what are the resources that you need to do this, to, to move on. How much will the development costs be how much will the go-to-market strategy cost and all this? So a bit about the resources, the timeline and the exit strategy. Um, the team. Um, I can't remember if I told you the last time we were here, but uh, 
half a year ago, we, uh, we invited uh, Shai Agassi. Did I tell you this? No? Um, Shai Agassi, uh, he, do you know him? He's uh, the founder of Better Place. They make these uh, batteries for cars, electric cars. And we invited him to give uh, a lecture about um, in attracting venture capital. And uh, he's a, kind of a crazy guy, really, really good, I think. But he managed to uh, get funded, of, get a funding of, uh, I think it was 750 million US dollars before he actually had a product. So that quite a lot of money uh, before he actually did have one of those car batteries. Um, so he, he spoke about how should you attract investors um, and how should you pitch your idea, how should you sell your idea before you actually do have a product, which is the situation you're in. Um, and, and he said that uh, there's a common saying in Silicon Valley where the biggest investors are. Uh, that's that investors look for three things, it's team, team, and team. Of course, it's not totally true, but I think uh, they, every investor looks for a team that can really drive the project all the way through, all the way through. And of course, you being DCU student, you, you, you would of course have some areas where you have uh, great competences, perhaps you do have some other areas where you're Competence is not as covered, but I think this part uh, of the pitch is also about saying what are the core competences in the team and how can you use them to divide into areas of uh, responsibility. But, and it's also showing that you're aware that you might in time need some other competences, that being like communication expert or business expert, I don't, wouldn't know, but just to make sure that everybody sees that you're aware of your own competences, how you will use them in the team, but also the potential lack of competences. So are there pl plans to reinforce the team in the future? And I think uh, it's quite common when investors uh, choose to fund a project that they put in, say, a CEO in the, uh, in the company because they want to have uh, someone they know uh, someone ha that has already proven uh, that they can run uh, being head of a business or something like that, they want that in the team. So it's quite a key not to have all the competences covered, just need to show that you're aware of this. Okay, I think that's basically um, the things that most pitches should include. Um, as I said, it's not necessarily uh, uh, that you need to include all these details, but Take it as like an option uh, to just get some inspiration of what could be included. As I said, is, this is twofold because you also need to get your message across in a good way. So there's also something about how you tell this, how you say this. Um, this is what you call the three rules of thumb, a presentation technique. It's quite simple, but very efficient. First you tell them what you're going to tell them, then you tell them, what, then you tell them what you told them. It's very, very basic, but it works. So I think, as I started out with uh, the introduction with the intro page, I said it might be a good idea to do this one sentence summary of the core of your business idea. This has also got to do with this, because you give people an idea what you're going to talk about. Then in the following five minutes, when you get a little more into details, they already know which area we're in. They already know, is this a service? Is, uh, is this uh, like, like a real product? What is it? Uh, they know what it's about. So it's much easier for them to understand. Uh, and it can also be quite good to do a wrap up in the end saying, so now I've told you how VentureCop can help all you students or something like that. Um, so, just have this structure can be quite efficient. As also said, the introduction is uh, very, very important. Um, the crucial opening of a speech, of a presentation, of a pitch. Um, because you often say that you've got around 20 to 30 seconds to catch someone's attention, to generate some interest. Um, Someone even say they've got your first 25 words to do that. So 
I don't know about that, but anyway, either case, you really need to focus on catching the listener's attention. You need to focus on generate some interest from the listener. Um, and of course, you need to make the listener understand why are they listening to you basically? Why are they here? What can you offer them? Um, and this is, as I said, the first 20 seconds. Um, so I think uh, it's basically when you're doing a pitch for your exam or for Venture Cup at the finals, I think it's a very good idea to actually go through and through, through that opening again and again. Decide exactly what you want to say, how you want to say it. What does your slide look like? And just rehearse it over and over again because that is so crucial the first 20 seconds. Something more general about how you say it. Uh, this is what my good colleague Senior always called the C theory. Um, also kind of basic, but smile, eye contact and enthusiasm. That actually showed that you're devoted to whatever you're talking about. Uh, it includes the listener, smiling, looking, having eye contact. So smile, eye contact, enthusiasm as a general thing. Of course, be prepared. Um, this seems obvious, but by being prepared, I also mean just not, not just preparing your pitch, because of course you do that. But you should also be prepared of what kind of questions will you be asked afterwards. Because you will be asked. In our finals, uh, we have, a, I think it's a seven minutes Q&A session afterwards, where the jury will ask into details. And actually, I think you can prepare that quite a lot, because there are some obvious questions to each business case. And they will ask into the business model. And they will ask into the implementation strategy. So perhaps you could prepare some of those questions. Um, so be well prepared. Of course, you need to uh, talk slowly and clearly, especially when, as I am right now, doing a presentation in English, which is not my mother tongue, so my, I will go blah, blah all the time and get confused with, with all the words. So talk slowly, talk clearly, and uh, you can also Decide uh, on emphasizing uh, certain points. Find out what are your three main points in your presentation, in your pitch. Then you can do little things uh, to point out these points. You can, for instance, do a break to emphasize the next, next certain point. That uh, you can also do like gestures, do like this, all, all these kind of things. Find out what are your key points in your presentation and make sure that you emphasize those. Stand still, well, not too still, uh, because this is not very nice looking at. But if I walk all the way around all the time, then you get, I draw a lot of attention by the way I move, and uh, then you won't focus on what I say. So I think you should find a way where you feel free to move a bit, a bit around, but, uh, but not too much. And um, actually, I think when you are on a team, I think you should actually try to, uh, to film yourself giving this uh, pitch. Just put up an iPhone and make someone from your team uh, film you. Because you actually, as I said, when I choked the last time I was here, I could see it on the, uh, on the internet, didn't look good. Um, and I think you can learn quite a lot from looking at yourself, how, how is your body language and how can you improve that. And of course, um, Use pictures, quotes, statistics, examples of all kinds. So instead of just going through numbers all the time, I think uh, this is a way to make it more alive and more relevant. And that could be part of uh, the actual PowerPoint or whatever format you're using. Um, there are some things I would like to say about that. Of course, keep it simple. Like, I know you already know that, but you don't want too much text in your slides. This is still a very, very, very common mistake. I'm sure you have some lectures here with some weird professor having slides with text all over the place. You don't want the text to be the same as you say. You just want, for instance, bullet points. Find out what are your key points and put that up there. So keep it simple. Use visuals. Uh, 
Sometimes uh, it can be very nice having a picture telling the thing that you're actually saying instead of uh, just having some text saying the same thing that, you, that you're already saying. And check the quality because they might not look the same when they get up here as they do on your screen. So check the quality of the pictures. Make sure they're not pixeled. Keep it simple too. Um, clear visual identity. So make sure you use the same kind of font that is readable. It's uh, so that it doesn't look uh, too confused. Uh, find a color scheme. Uh, very, very, very simple things, but it actually makes the presentation much more professional and easy to understand. Don't have too many things on your slide, too many colors, too many figures, because it will confuse the listener and they'll actually start focusing on that instead of listening to what you're actually saying. So, keep it simple too. And rehearse. Because it's not enough that you do a really good presentation, um, and it's not, not enough that you did some really good slides. I think you need to rehearse your pitch while you're actually trying to change the slides. So, can you remember what's on the slides, and do you need all the time to do like this, and it doesn't look good? Um, and there's also something about just remembering actually to, to, uh, to change the slides because when you get, get a bit nervous when you're at the exam or at the Venture Cup final up for winning like quarter of a million kroners, you get a bit nervous and then you forget to change your slide and you, you forget what's up there. So rehearse and rehearse like where you actually do the, uh, the pitch Film the pitch, do the pitch, rehearse it a lot. So, just to summarize, um, you guys should know your product, you should know your audience, and uh, you should know your goal. And you need to focus on making the listener understand your business. So, what is your business about? And you need to generate some desire. That's the difficult one, but if you can generate some desire, they have all the interest in, interest in your project. They will they tend to know no more. They will want to know more. So that's the main three points. And I think if you kind of focus on the things I put up there early on, um, I think you'll be successful in doing that. But now it's your turn. Um, as I told you, uh, we'll divide you into two groups, bigger groups. So the first half of the uh, groups, group one to seven, you can stay in here. Uh, and uh, the other groups can go out here, something like that. Can you sit out here? Yeah, yeah okay. And basically, um, as Tom said, you don't need to look at uh, all the other uh, presentations. But we have quite a lot of presentations today, so you just, need to, you just need to make sure that the next team is ready to go up here so we don't spend too much time finding a team and putting on the PowerPoint and all that. So basically what we'll do now is just team 1 to uh, 7 stays here, team 8 to 15 go out there, work on your idea, work on your business plan, and um, you'll just um, go from number one on, go up and do your presentation. And the other teams in the room don't need to sit here and uh, listen because uh, I, I got the impression that you already saw each other's uh, presentations. So it's just sit up here, work, just be ready when it's your turn so we don't spend too much time uh, finding the PowerPoint. If you have like an USB uh, key with, um, with your presentation, it's good. You can also just connect to the computer, but just be ready with your presentation. And, uh, We'll do like 10 minutes for each presentation. You do your five minutes pitch, and then Jakob and uh, Tom and I will give uh, some feedback. Yeah? Can we do it without the presentation? Sorry? Can we do it without the presentation? Without the PowerPoint? Yeah. Yeah, you're sure, sure. Of course, it's not, you don't need to have a PowerPoint if you don't want to. It's just, for most people, I think it's easier, but if you like. You know, the guy Shai Agassi I told you about, he did, uh, he did his pitch without the PowerPoint. Um, and of course it worked very, very well. So basically, um, if you just are ready, and um, then we'll just uh, go through all the presentations, five minutes pitch, and then five minutes feedback for each. Okay? <laughs>